so last week oh do we have any housekeeping no but my name's katie oh that would be helpful wouldn't it yep i'm garrett <laughs> this is the bar is ankle high it is um <laughs> as you can tell by our intro <laughs> bars in hell today we're both a little tired that's <laughs> fine um so last week we started talking about depression we kind of talked about some symptoms and some basic facts you know types of depression um we're gonna pick up today wrapping up different um ages genders like how um depression impacts different groups okay so studies also show we we were talking last week about how women are disproportionately affected with affected with depression or diagnosed maybe is the better term uh with depression more than men There's also a higher rate of depression and an increased risk of the disorder among the LGBTQIA plus community. Mm. Um, Census.gov did a survey and the survey's findings were similar for those who reported symptoms of depression, which it looks like I took that sentence out of context. So Mm. it sounds like you took it out of context too. Don't worry. (laughs) So we're off to a good start. (laughs) Half of LGBTQIA plus respondents age 18 to 29 reported symptoms of depression compared to about 29% of non-LGBTQ respondents in that wow. age group. So double the Almost. The instance, yeah. 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 Um, and I mean, when you think about it, like. Yeah. Societal. Familial. Woes, yeah. Problems with like school and work as far as like. The social aspect and Mm -hmm. bullying and, like, othering that happens in school and in work. Um, Our government just trying to legislate people out of existence as if that's something that's possible. Insane. Um, You know, the impact on self-esteem. I mean, there's just, like, so many facets to it. Um, You know, there's there's a lot that goes into it. And I think in addition to – you look at – it's not just depression. It's, like – the impact of houselessness, it's the impact of, you know, higher um, instances of dying by suicide. There's just, like, a a lot. This is, like, a multifactorial issue, Um, and obviously this is just, like, one very small part of it. So happy Pride, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, I was just going to say that, um, you know, also trans individuals, especially um, black trans women, are more likely to die by murder yeah. than by any other cause. Um, right, like in addition to bullying and all of those, there's right, also in addition to domestic violence. And yes, right, and being you know non disowned by your pan by your uh, your family and your parents and um, all those things that make it really really hard to live in a uh, country that pretends that we're not Christian and dangerous alleges that we're not a religious country and right. a religious government. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's very dangerous. So when you're faced with all of those things as a reality of living as an, uh, LGBTQIA plus individual, whether you're out or not, and, you know, openly trans or openly, uh, gay or whatever, um, you know, all of that, reality pl- like it weighs on you forever it doesn't right. just go away right. just because you're home which um yeah leads to significant instances of um, depression but also i saw a study that said that the instance of trans youth um rates of depression goes down by like a crazy amount um when they're provided with gender affirming care Before and during puberty, which at the time of pre and during puberty, gender affirming care comes in the form of calling somebody by the name they want to be called and Mm -hmm. pronouns that they want to be called and allowing them to dress the way that they want to be called and be giving them puberty blockers, which we've been using since the 1950s. I actually mentioned those later on. Oh, really? Those come up, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, But yeah, we've been using them since the 1950s to just block puberty. Once you go off them, you naturally it will enter puberty. So Mm -hmm. if, you know, as some people think, these people will just change their minds, quote unquote, well, there's no harm, no foul. You'll still go through puberty and and enter biological adulthood. Who cares? Well, I mean, 
Apart yeah, from the question of like, why do I fucking care what right, what right, your right. body does and so where you're smelling from, from? But freedom. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> freedom isn't free. Uh, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, it's just like wild because I was um, sort of like hypothetically discussing with somebody. Like somebody was telling me that they had this conversation with an older person that they know, and I was like, right, but like gender affirming care does not mean that we're performing gender confirmation surgery right. on minors like you're just giving them therapy right. and a short haircut or a long haircut whichever you know right. letting them just exist and wear the clothing that they want to wear and somehow like whatever they do in the bathroom with a locked door is right. somehow your business but you know it's allowing wild. people that space to just exist in comfortably yeah just just to exist right just to right, exist right. is um it can allow them to live like it just fully uh i wouldn't say that it cures the depression but it gives them the space to grow up so that they can have this perspective that we were talking about last week where right. you can say okay well that person's crazy and an asshole mm-hmm. i don't need to listen to them um and it just gives you that space so it's just interesting that a lot i think a lot of the dialogue is about is is weaponizing gender affirming care as these medical interventions when really it's not it's just calling somebody by a different name i mean it's no different than this like critical race theory conversation well, yeah they can't define right yeah they can't define woke either right 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 <laughs> so it's it's these buzzwords that are just used to to be divisive yeah they they're they can't even define them. Mm-hmm. You can't tell them. I mean, yeah, it it's like the whole thing with the Target stuff. And yeah. I mean, they're pulling stuff from the adult section, saying it's in the kids section. And did you see that thing? That one guy that was filming himself like being mad in Target about all the Pride stuff. Somebody found him on Grinder. <laughs> oh yeah. So anyway, wait, was he like actually on Grinder though, or was he like on Grinder? Like scamming for people so that he could like harm them. No. Oh. Like let me show you my beehole. Like George or uh, George Santos. Is mm-hmm. that his name? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, he was like on Grinder. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> um, I found out recently that Grinder gives you somebody's location within feet. Mm-hmm. I did not realize that. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. Very much. Uh, obviously an app that was originally designed for just men to use because there's no way that women would do that. That's fucking crazy. No, like in, (laughs) no, I won't, I don't even like using my location services, let alone. You don't like using Instagram without location services. (laughs) Fair point. I'm surprised you let me know where you live. (laughs) That's a good point. (laughs) Touche. Um, depression can also happen at any age. On average, it first appears during late teens to like mid twenties. Um, and in kids and teens, I guess they didn't always acknowledge the fact that depression occurred in kids and teens. What? How strange. (laughs) Um, they're saying like, it tends to be that kids are expressing more irritability than sadness, which makes sense um there's a lot of chronic like mood and anxiety disorders um in adults that start representing as high levels of anxiety in childhood okay um for children do they know um if depression is it like a mood disorder like we have a chemical imbalance in our brain or is it precipitated by a traumatic event um we'll talk about causes but it can be both okay Sometimes it is both. Sometimes it's one and then the other. Um, so the, the signs and symptoms are similar to adults, but there are some differences in younger children. Um, sometimes they're sad, sadness, irritability, um, irritability, clinginess, um, being worried about things, having aches and pains, refusing to go to school, um, being underweight mm. is also a symptom or sign um, in teens, similar the sadness, the irritability, feeling negative and worthless, anger, 
um, poor performance and or poor attendance at school, um, being extremely sensitive, the recreational use of drugs and alcohol, which we were talking about last week, mm-hmm. um, especially on like a young brain. Yeah. Has such oh. a major impact. Mm. Um, yeah, that's scary. Especially when you're at a point where you're starting to learn those coping mechanisms for these feelings. Um, eating or sleeping too much, self-harm, loss of interest in normal activities, avoiding social interaction. Um, it says that one in 30 young children gets depressed. Um, young children, so pre-puberty. Yeah. Wow. Um, symptoms tend to be missed. Adults usually think the problem is something else. Mm. Um And it says two-thirds of children with mental health problems don't get help. Whoa. Yeah. And and there is a lot of controversy around, you know, the depression medication, like SSRIs, Mm -hmm. don't work the same in kids as they do in adults. But um, treating depression, like, I mean, is effective for adults. It it is also effective for kids. It's just finding the right type of treatment. Okay. Um, When you say, like, finding the right type of treatment, do you mean medication or do you mean, like, CBT or? I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> cool. Usually when this I'm like a choose your own adventure. Yeah. Usually when I'm prepping for research, I'm like, Katie's going to ask me this and I'll take a second to Google it. Nope. Missed that one. Um, <laughs> it's been a while since we've done We're this. a little so. rusty. Um, in older adults, obviously depression is not like a normal part of growing older. It's something that happens sometimes, but it's not like to be expected. Okay. Shouldn't be taken lightly. It's true. Not everybody on the Golden Girls was, like, desolate. That's true. Um, and in older adults, it also tends to go undiagnosed, untreated. Mm. Um, also, older folks may be reluctant to seek help. Mm. So. Yeah, well, the boomers know everything, so I don't know why you would ever question it. Never. Those lead paint chips did nothing. You fucking commie. <laughs> Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while <laughs> since I've been called a commie. Um, there are slightly different appearances of, sim- of, of depression in older adults. Memory difficulties or personality changes. Um, physical aches or pains. Fatigue, loss of appetite. Sleep problems or a loss of interest in sex not caused by a medical condition or medication. Um, wanting to stay home not wanting to go out or socialize or do new things, um, and especially in older men, suicidal thinking or feelings. Hmm. Um, so some of – there's a lot of overlap um, with with regular depression symptoms, but there's also a few differences. Yeah. Um, I wonder if – you know that retirement community in Florida, the villages mm-hmm. with all the STDs? Mm-hmm. I wonder if they have like – in addition to their classes on how to use a condom – they have classes on like identifying depression. Yeah, they should. I bet they don't. Probably not. They probably I'm, just I'm also like... certain they don't have condom usage classes. So, oh, that's a fair point too. Yeah. yeah, remember that on Parks and Rec when she was trying to do the sex ed at that retirement community because there was like an outbreak of like chlamydia or something. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and the really religious people were trying to <laughs> stop it. So there are like other health areas kind of connected to depression. Um, or health topics, I should say. So I did not know this. Smoking is connected to depression. Like smoking causes depression? There's a link. It says that there's a link between them. So data shows that individuals with depression are more likely to smoke. People with mental health conditions smoke three out of every 10 cigarettes in the U.S. Hmm. Um, But they're saying that they really need to like do more research before they can like clearly address the relationship between yeah mental health and smoking i just thought that was like a really interesting that is interesting and probably tough to study because it's like like if you come from a smoking household you're more likely to smoke just period right um so then to like yeah then you have like correlation causation like are you just smoking because that's your family history right did you start smoking because of a precipitated event don't get me wrong. When I was depressed, there were times where I was like, man, I wish I was a smoker. Oh, I, I think that's my totally take the edge off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, did, were, were you using, you know, recreational drugs mm-hmm. and you came off those, but you still needed some kind of like vice. Mm-hmm. So you started smoking. Um, yeah, it would be it would be interesting to see more research on that. Yeah. 
Um, there's also certain conditions that are associated with higher rates of depression. Okay. So um, neurodegenerative diseases, so things oh, like yeah. Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Mm. That makes sense. R.I.P. Sure, like, Robin Williams. Yeah. Cool. Louis Body Dementia. Yeah. Oh, God, that's right. Um, stroke, people that have survived stroke, multiple sclerosis, which I feel like could also fall into that neurodegenerative Mm -hmm. Um, diseases, um, seizure disorders, cancer, macular degeneration, chronic pain, which we talked about last week. Yeah. Um, and I think with some of these, you know, you may have had depression in the past and then you experience this and you slip right back into those same feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, they mentioned, you know, chronic pain that it's sometimes a chicken and egg situation. Are you experiencing chronic pain because you're depressed or are you living with chronic pain and then right and then you're depression. depressed because you can't do what you want to do right. yeah um there are other medical treatments that can also be linked to depression so um some early generation beta blockers which are used for blood pressure um they induced depression in some patients they're saying that the evidence is kind of conflicting on that (laughs) they're like we'll slow down your heart rate (laughs) so so. don't worry (laughs) you'll question if you should be alive (laughs) although uh my my resting heart rate is so slow when i'm not pregnant that my spouse jokes that i'm like a blue whale Hmm. um yeah i'll i'll be sitting there (laughs) calm and my resting heart rate will be like 47 oh and so it's like that Oh, I I feel it. Oh, yep, I felt another beat. <laughs> it's very slow. Um, there's also a link between alpha alpha interferon therapy and depression. Is that that werewolf porn? Yep, mm. that's definitely I knew it. That's definitely what that is. I'm actually going to Google it real quick because I did not. Alpha interferon therapy. I'm pretty sure it's werewolf werewolf porn (laughs) what could it be other than about werewolf porn yeah because they talk about alphas and betas and you just talked about betas and alphas um it's a pharmaceutical drug composed obtained I need the explain to me like I'm five. Okay. It's used in a variety of treatments, including certain forms of leukemia, malignant melanoma, lot non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, hepi, hepsi, and is typically administered as an injection under the skin. What's um, it called again? Alpha interferon therapy. So there is a strong um, link between that therapy and depression. One study found that a third of patients that had this therapy developed depression after three months. Hmm. But the people that had beta interferon therapy, there was no evidence of an increased rate of depression. So it was unique to the alpha interferon therapy. I don't know what, what is the beta? I'm just Googling that. Oh, it's an anti-inflammatory for multiple sclerosis. Hmm. Interesting. It looks like the alpha one has more to do with, like, diseases that affect your liver. Hmm. Um, Where's Jamie? I know, right? <laughs> Answer Jamie? our questions. <laughs> Help <Nerds>. us. <laughs> we just need, like, a bat signal, but it's the neurodivergent nurse logo. Yeah. Help us. <laughs> um. There's also some evidence that um, drugs used to treat alopecia. There's increased depressive symptoms as well as um, another drug that's used to treat acne. Um, And then there's also like families of drugs that can sometimes lead to an increased risk of depression. So anti-convulsants, anti-migraine medication, anti-psychotics. And then they talked about hormonal agents such as those gonotrophin releasing hormones that GnRH mm-hmm. which they use for um puberty blockers like hormone blockers they also get used for fertility treatments and in cancer treatment 
which I thought was really interesting. Hmm. Which makes sense, like if you have like a breast cancer, that they want right. to block the hormones or so like feeding the something. Tumor. Where, um, like, reproductive cervical, health. Right, yeah, right, like, right. your ovarian cancer. Or whatever. Um, so, obviously, that is going to, like, tie into a couple discussions we've had before. Yeah. Infertility and the medications. I know, like, I experienced, like, horrific hot flashes. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that and then the impact on the trans community. Yeah. Like, plus then the drugs you're taking can also cause a higher incidence of depression. It's just, like, wild. Um, which is you know why um it's important to you know if you're going to if you're having an adverse effect for from a medication if you're having you know they say like you know notify your doctor if you have thoughts of suicide mm-hmm. in those like advertisements for a medication that's why it's important to tell them yeah because it could just be that maybe you need a higher dose right. and then you won't have that side effect maybe you need a totally different medication mm-hmm. but you have got to tell them like right away because y- it can cost you your life like, like you know that tweet where somebody's talking to their doctor and they said are you experiencing feelings of anxiety and depression and she's like aren't we all and the doctor's like no yeah <laughs> that's it like it's worth mentioning Right. Like when I, I called my doctor and I was like, I I need to be proactive about this. Like I need to get on something because I'm I'm having a really hard time when I shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. So no, it's definitely important to like check in with yourself. And, and the other thing I know, like we talked about this with hormones, but like I started keeping like a notebook where I was tracking symptoms that I was feeling, when I was feeling them, how severe they were. And yeah. it helped me like notice patterns in my, um, in my period. Yeah. And different um, PMS symptoms that I had that were kind of sneaky which is relevant also i mean if you are having a period or you have um you know female hormones that you're trying to manage and also struggling with depression it's worth it to monitor all of those things so that you can at least you know if you're taking uh either you know hormone therapy supplements or you know puberty blockers you can say to your doctor okay on these weeks i'm struggling with X, Y, Z, it appears that it's in the second half of my menstrual cycle or it appears that it happens, you know, this, this, this. So then like we talked about with PMDD, they can up your dose for those two weeks or whatever. Right. Um, But yeah, like it's, it's worth it. diagnose you with PMDD. Right. It's just like, there's a lot of it's, and I mean, obviously a lot of this comes down to like access. And I think that's a huge issue Mm. with something like depression, which is so common. Yeah. um, That access is a really big issue for a lot of people. So if you have the ability to be checking in with a primary care doctor or some kind of like general practitioner, it's important to mention things like that. And if you live near a large medical institution um, or a medical college, it's worth asking if they have a mental health clinic. Mm -hmm. Um, Like just... I know calling up is like a nightmare. It's a nightmare for me to call anybody. Yeah. But, um, you know, you can check their website, but like, it's worth calling and saying like, Hey, I don't have the best insurance, but, um, like, do you have a mental health clinic I can go to because I'm struggling with this? And yeah, you might have to like sign some forms that students can work on you and whatever, but at least then you're getting care. And at that point you're probably getting like cutting edge care because the students are all reading the new Yeah, new yeah. journal articles and shit because they want to impress their teachers. Yeah. so And also, like, inquiring about sliding scale, too. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of places that offer a sliding scale. So that, those are things that are worth asking about, worth inquiring about because... Which is obviously only relevant to our American listeners because everywhere else that listens oh, yeah, to us... you don't have to worry about ...has this. fucking health care. <laughs> I mean, maybe you have wait times, but we have wait times and access issues. <laughs> yeah. Um, so causes of depression. So... Something that's worth noting before we talk about that, there are medical conditions like thyroid problems, a brain tumor, vitamin deficiencies that can mimic symptoms of depression. So it is important to rule out any like general medical causes that could be causing your symptoms. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I have to take a lot of vitamin D because I have extremely low vitamin D. That's what I started doing like as fall came up, I started, and that really did take the edge off for a while. Mm-hmm. So when I called my doctor, I was like, look, I'm doing the light, I'm doing the vitamin D, I'm taking my stupid walks, and I'm still having a hard time. <laughs> I've been taking, like, I don't know how much it is. It's, like, 75 micrograms mm-hmm. of vitamin D a day, 
and I've been doing that for like four years and I finally have a vitamin D that's not in the low range. It's really hard. Finally. Oh my God. I was like, Jesus Christ. There was one summer I was outside like constantly the whole summer and my vitamin D levels were normal. You have to get a lot of sun. Technically my vitamin D is finally high. It went from like I think it was acceptable last year. It was like 30. Mm -hmm. And this year it's 60. Got me. But (laughs) I don't know what changed. I finally did it. But like, holy shit. I was like, oh my God. Like, and thankfully, like, I didn't notice a significant change in like my personality, but I think I'm just a lot. (laughs) Same. Same. (laughs) So like, it was, it wasn't so bad for me, but yeah. Like, somebody on Reddit once was, like, I was, like, yeah, my doctor basically, they were talking about, like, taking vitamin D, and I was, like, yeah, like, it can't hurt. Like, right. I was, like, honestly, like, I'm an extremely pale person. My doctor effectively told me it would be next to impossible for me to overdose on vitamin D. So, like, <laughs> go for it and basically find the highest dose you can in yeah. whatever, in the vitamin aisle and go for it. And somebody responded and was, like, actually, you can uh... overdose. And I was, like, okay, well, obviously, yes, but I'm not, like – I'm obviously not on the door of kidney toxicity here. So like, Jesus. Yeah. I just pulled a muscle rolling my eyes. (laughs) So there are several factors that can play a role in depression. So on a biochemical level, um, there are definitely differences in certain chemicals in the brain's chemistry that can contribute to symptoms of depression Mm -hmm. so whether you've got molecules that help make those neurotransmitters those the enzymes that make those are in short supply or you don't have enough receptor sites to receive the neurotransmitters or you don't have enough of the molecules that build the neurotransmitters or too little of a of something like serotonin um, that's being produced all of those things can just like we talked about with adhd Mm-hmm. Like when something's out of whack, there's there's a definite impact in like how your brain is functioning. Mm-hmm. So we're all going to be really excited to know that dopamine is one of the things. Oh, what a relief. Roll. I actually wrote <laughs> dopamine, you sneaky bitch. <laughs> is, ah, is I love it. Says. <laughs> so as we know, because we talk about it all the time, dopamine creates positive feelings, those that reward reinforcement thing that gets us to continue with a task or activity. It's that motivating factor. Mm -hmm. There is evidence that reduced dopamine levels can contribute to depression in some people. Um, So sometimes if other treatments have failed, medications that affect dopamine can be added to help some people with depression. So really, like when we're talking about brain chemistry, it's going to be the right type of depression medication that's going to help your representation of depression. Um, Serotonin, that feel good hormone that helps regulate your mood among a lot of other things. There's like a ton of other things that serotonin does, but speaking to mental health, serotonin has really been like center stage in the last like 30 years Mm -hmm. since they developed um, SSRIs, which is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Mm. Um, and those specifically, as the name implies, act on serotonin molecules. Right. So it stops your brain from reabsorbing them too quickly, which... Right. So that you're like getting a balanced, right, it like high gives, dose of it. Right. Which we've talked about in like one of our first episodes mm-hmm. um, when it comes to dopamine, either an ADHD brain doesn't produce enough dopamine or our... Uh, our neurotransmitters release the dopamine, but they suck it up too fast for the other neurotransmitter to accept it. So an SSRI just prevents that reuptake, that sucking up of the serotonin. It's like regulating it. Yeah. It slows it down so that your your other neurotransmitter has an opportunity to receive the serotonin that you do produce. Right. So it's not, it's not stimulating serotonin production. It's reducing Um, the vacuum cleaner in your brain from robbing you of your own serotonin. (laughs) Yes, that was good. Um, You wanted me to explain it to you like you're five. That's great. (laughs) I just needed that for alpha interferon therapy. Yeah, well, I Um, told you it was werewolf werewolf porn. (laughs) Say it fast and see. (laughs) You just have marbles in your mouth. (laughs) I mean, that's how I'm feeling anyway. (laughs) Um, lichen, I'll call it that. Lichen porn. <laughs> oh, 
we're going to get some weird emails now. Um, what else is new? It's <laughs> a good point. <laughs> um, norepinephrine, which is both a neurotransmitter and a hormone. So that's what kind of drives that fight or flight response along with adrenaline. Mm-hmm. Um, helps send messages from one nerve cell to the next. So in the 60s, I don't know how to say this guy's name. Joseph J. You nailed it. Schlindkraut. Oh. <laughs> Schlindkraut. Hypothesized that norepinephrine was the brain chemical of interest for depression. Um, and he presented this, like, hypothesis of mood disorders that was kind of all centered around norepinephrine. Right. So, like, if I guess if you're thinking, like, depression is the lack of a fight or flight response. Like, it's it's depressive. So you're missing that, like. Right. The, like. It's Something. not crazy. No, that's. I mean, there's, there's, there's been I can a lot follow of that that train of thought. Totally, yeah. And there's been like a lot of challenges to that um, as time goes on. Um, like they're saying, like neuropinephrine levels doesn't affect the mood of every person, but like we also look at this like okay, but... not every bout of depression is caused by a, a serotonin imbalance right. or a dopamine imbalance. Um, I mean, he's basically saying like you know. Depression occurs when there's too little norepinephrine in some of your brain circuits. Right. So um, I and you named like a bunch of different types of depression. Right. It would track that that would follow for perhaps the persistent one. Right. Where you're persistently in this like stormy rain cloud state with you know the no for motivation. Years. Yeah. Like right. you you have no interest in cleaning. You have no interest in bathing or you know doing anything, and you're just debilitated right 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 um and but the you know to not that it's necessarily fight or flight every time i wash myself but i can get to a point where i'm like girl you gotta no but there's wash your ass like that's like driving (laughs) yes and they're saying he's like saying alternatively to too little when you have too much then you're looking at like a manic state yeah. So it, I mean, it that, makes sense to me. That's, that's, I mean, as far as hypotheses go, that's not, it's not bad. That's not crackpot. Um, for sure. And there are medications that specifically target norepinephrine that can alleviate depression for some people, but not for other people, which right. makes sense why they're thinking dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, those three as, as when we're talking brain chemistry causes. And I've heard so many different stories from people who have elected to take medication for depression and have needed to try different medications because you have to figure out what works for you or like what combination of things work for you because it can be more than one thing. It's not like, like, okay, you broke your leg. So either you broke your femur or your tibia or your fibia. Yeah. Like it's not like potentially you could have all three of those bones broken, Yeah. but like your leg's still fucking broken. We'll talk like, let's, I'll get to treatments. Okay. I have a whole bunch on treatments. Okay. Um, Depression can also run in families, so there is a genetic link to it. Um, for example, like if one identical twin has depression, the other has a 70% chance of having depression at some point in their life. Hmm. I'm surprised that it's not identical for, or like it's not 100% for an identical twin. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Are yeah. you questioning your research now? No, I'm sure there's like a reasonable explanation. Jamie! <laughs> I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. She's going to charge us if we keep making her fact check the dumb shit we She's going to be like rolling our eyes like, Jesus, it took me 30 seconds to Google this. She's going to delete our group chat. (laughs) Um, Don't call me. There's there's also certain um, personality traits that they link with um, instances of depression. People with low self-esteem, um, people who are easily overwhelmed by stress, people who are, like, generally pessimistic, mm-hmm. more instances, um, low extroversion, and high levels of neuroticism. Um, mm-hmm. And those are just those are just traits that they may be more likely to experience a depressive episode. Um, it's not like a, a cause. It's just something that right. those things may lend themselves more to falling into a depressive episode well yeah because it sounds like all of those things have a a connection to there's probably a brain chemistry element to a lot of them well yes but also like those those things those traits you described are like what i would also contribute to somebody who isn't good at adapting to new situations um so like if you're an extreme introvert or Mm -hmm. you know like i guess i would probably consider that an uh, 
an example of anxiety, but like you might mm-hmm. be having that anxious thought because you don't want to deal with whatever social potential there because is. Because you're easily overwhelmed. Right. Or... So, yeah, I, I would imagine then if something does happen that causes a depress- depressive episode, it's because you don't have that innate, I guess, ability to bounce back yeah. the way somebody who wouldn't suffer a depressive episode because of that trigger. Right, right, right. Um. So there's also environmental factors, so continuous exposure to violence, neglect, abuse, poverty. Those can also put you in a more vulnerable position to a depressive episode. Reasonable. Um, yeah. All good reasons to be depressed, in my opinion. 100%. Yeah. Um, something I thought was interesting is depressed brains may look different. So they did um, MRI scans with people that have major depressive disorder. Um, and there was a review published in December 2019 in Translational Psychiatry, the Journal of Translational Psycho- Psychiatry. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they say, you know, obviously it's not useful to diagnose it alone um, and they want to improve it. But there is um, certain tests on an MRI that can show indications of depression, which I thought oh. was interesting. It's like um, um, those CTE scans. Right. Do. Yeah. right, right, but hopefully not postmortem. Um, right, and hopefully not the NFL telling people to fuck off. Yes. Uh, yeah. And covering it up. Um, and like we said, depression is also linked to other health problems, but people with depression are also at a higher risk of chronic inflammatory or autoimmune conditions. So things like diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease – it's unclear if the depression causes the inflammation or vice versa. That's crazy. But I guess if it's – if your depression is the result of a hormonal imbalance, mm-hmm. then that would cause gut health issues mm-hmm. that could lead to intense inflammation. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, if you've insulin's got that, a hormone, norepinephrine's right. a hormone, like, all these different things. And if things. you've got that, like, systemic inflammatory issue going on, arthritis – Cortisol is, is a hormone reasonable. that right. will... Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Depression is also often experienced with coexisting anxiety, which makes perfect sense. Um, so people who have one tend to experience another. Um, depression is experienced as anxiety. They're, they're estimating 65% of the time. Um, and women are especially vulnerable to anxiety disorders um there was one quote in one of these articles from a doctor who said anxiety can be as debilitating as impression as depression not impression (laughs) anxiety can be as debilitating as depression but people may have lived with it so long they don't realize they actually have anxiety that's the thing with the turning on the light switch yes so make sure you're seeing somebody really talking to somebody I'm really getting an accurate diagnosis so that you're getting the most effective treatment. Speaking of treatment, (laughs) I think we should pick up treatment next week because I have lots of information on treatment. Oh, okay. So tune in next week. (laughs) Remember when we said this was going to be two-parter? JK, we're bad at this. (laughs) Three parts. There's just so much to cover. Like I started researching this and I was like, oh, shit, I'm in over my head. Like, uh, there's more. It's kind of like hormones. And I was like, I'm going to do an episode on hormones. Cut to, like, six episodes later. And I'm like, I'm still finishing these episodes on hormones. Yep. Um, so this is the same thing. It's just, like, a, a lot to cover. Um, All right. And I want to give it a oh. fair a fair shake. So TBD, then, on how many parts this will have. Likely three. <laughs> but please don't quote us. Yet. Please don't quote us. Also, we will both collapse at the end of this recording. <laughs> If it's more than three or if it's three. Um, So tune in next week for episode 46. Yeah. Ah, 46. I remembered it an hour later. I'm a professional. I can't. Oh, we're in July now. I have no idea. That I definitely can't. Can't. We Um, got emailed to us, but. Hold on. I'm real bad at that. But we will conclude this talking about. Treatments of depression um, next week. Oh, no. 46. So 46 comes out June 29th. So for, this one comes out June 22nd. Okay. So we'll see you at the end of June. Yeah. No, we're already kind of in the end of June when this is coming out, even though we're recording it in May. 
We're doing our best, guys. <laughs> We're trying so we're hard. Not, we're not calendar math wizards, okay? No, and we're also recording for now, and we're recording for maternity leave times. So we have like five different timelines happening at the same time, and that's not our strong suit. So we're trying our best. So we'll talk to you next week. Yeah. About depression treatments. And in the meantime, you can join our Patreon at... Uh, patreon.com slash the bar is ankle high. There's three tiers to choose from. We have $2 toe rings for $2 a month. You get um, monthly horoscopes that I write and make up entirely because I am not a trained astrologist. But um, So follow them at your own risk. But I will say that about a year ago, Gemini started a cult that was moderately successful. Yeah, it was interesting. So that was a, an ongoing saga. It was a wild ride. Yeah. Um, our next tier is anklets. For $5 a month, you get bi-weekly Dysfunction Junction episodes. Plus the horoscope. Plus the monthly horoscopes. Um, and then for $10 a month, you can be a Limbo Champion and get all of that stuff, the horoscopes, the bi-weekly Dysfunction Junction episodes. Plus you get um, ad-free episodes and you get added to our close friends list on Instagram. Um, so again, you can join at patreon.com slash the bar is ankle high. Um, if you want some cool ankle high merch, like a ragtag champion shirt, um, you can go to bit.ly slash ankle high merch. Really? <laughs> uh-huh. And <laughs> make sure you're following us on Instagram at the bars ankle high. We'll be having our 10,000 uh, download giveaway soon. Plus a major announcement coming up in July that you definitely want to be following us for. So um, make sure you're following us. We're at the bar is ankle high on Instagram. And yeah, that's all I have. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So until next week, um, talk to your doctor if you don't feel good sometimes. Check in with yourself. Yeah. And the people around you. Because uh, depression gets the best of us. Mm-hmm. And it's hard. It is hard. And the bar is ankle high. Bye. 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 Bye.